shadow work is basically finding the root cause of a limiting belief, right? Mm -hmm. And it might be you looking into your past. It might be looking into emotions and things like that. And just seeing like, hey, just, just being an observation of things in your life, in your past and events that kind of have stuck with you. And I always tell people like, it's not that you're there to defend your past self. It's not that you're there trying to dig, you know, you're not an archeologist in your life. You're, you're not really doing anything. You're literally being an observation. You're just seeing the events. And sometimes when we just give the space to look and be in observation, be the observer, it gives us a new insight. It gives us a different point of view. It allows us to have some freedom from that limiting belief. I can share some of my limiting beliefs if you want me to. Go for it. Sure. So um, through doing shadow work, I had come upon this um, instance that happened, this event that happened in my childhood. It was actually, I was, as a kid, I really, really wanted to become a singer. Mm -hmm. So I had joined the school choir, right? And I remember one day we were in the auditorium on the bleachers, standing there, we're all singing. And my, my music teacher, I'll just call her Mrs. K. She stopped everybody and she was like, let that come down here. And I was like, oh my God, this is my chance. I got my solo. I know it. I was so excited. Walked down there and she looks at me and she goes, you have a terrible voice. You shouldn't mm-hmm. sing. You probably shouldn't speak. Sit down. You're out of the choir. And she made me sit in the auditorium, you know, chairs. And of oh course, God. this whole bleacher full of students were like, oh man, they were like laughing and Oh, I could have just shriveled up into a little ball in that moment, you know, and it was devastating for me. And in that moment, I had made the choice that she was right and that I couldn't sing. My voice had no value and I shouldn't speak up. And then guess what? For the next decade of my life, guess what I did? (laughs) I didn't speak up for myself. I didn't know that my voice had value and I totally, totally dimmed my own light. And it was only through the space of, of shadow work and really understanding this, right, that I was able to shift it. And I was able to be in that space of forgiveness, not only to Mrs. K, but like also to myself for even accepting that. Because there could have been someone else that went through a same or similar event and been like, whatever, what does she know? Bye, you know, <laughs> went running off. So it's not about the event in itself. It's about the meaning that we made in that event. Right. And I made the meaning that my voice had no value. Right. right. And it just, then it, it continued and continued and continued. And what shifted for me when I had really done this deep work was that my voice did have value. And that's mm-hmm. when I really had stepped into my coaching practice and things really took off. And now, you know, I, I work with a lot of social media and all of these things and I make a, a ton of videos and I'm able to really truly express myself and impact the world. And I always think back to that moment, right? And if I had chosen to continue to stay silent and to think that my voice didn't have any value and it didn't matter what I said, man, life would be different. Not only for me, but for how many millions of people. 